Hey everybody, thank you again for being a part of our Friday Facebook Live. This is Living Inside Out with Daniel Amstutz, and what a blessing it is to come to you today, again, sharing about living life in Christ and living it from the inside out. You know, I am really passionate about helping people discover how worshiping in spirit and truth will transform their life. So thank you for joining me today and every Friday that you are able to join us. We are just excited to be here with you. I'm very excited also to announce that Harrison House Publishers is publishing my book, which is projected to be released in the spring of next year, 2021, is what they're saying in terms of the projected release. And so uh, this book will be called The Place of His Presence, with a subtitle of Awakening to the Life and Spirit Within. And uh, man, I'm excited about it, as you could probably tell. But you can also go to my website, which is uh, www.danielamstetzcollective.com uh, for more information. We'll be uh, putting updates on that website as well. So listen, right now, especially right now, we need to awaken to a, a new generation to the power of spirit and truth. Amen? The power of living life in Christ. How life can be lived now from the inside out, all because of Jesus. God designed us to be the place of his presence, and he designed us to be overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So we've been talking about how worshiping in spirit and truth from the inside out with the Spirit of God living in us is very different, and it's very powerful and how praising God supernaturally opens us up from the inside out for all that God has for us. So the supernatural power of praise is really what I want to talk about today. And that is an amazing thing. You know why? Uh, because God is able to be and do uh, who he says he is and do what he says we can do as we cooperate with him and allow his life to flow through ours. This is actually the third week that we've been talking about praise. There is so much to this topic. We could actually talk about it for weeks, but uh, this is our third week to talk about this this week. So let's jump back into our study on praise and discover what praise looks like from the inside out. How What, what does praise sound like from someone who's redeemed from the heart of a believer. How does it even happen? You know, what is this all about? Is it possible that a sound from heaven is being released in the earth today through the body of Christ? Well, I think it is. Ephesians 5 verse 18 tells us this, to sing in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs so one of the Psalms that I love, we're going to talk about this scripture a little bit later, but one of the Psalms that I love talks about that sound that I'm referring to, that sound from heaven and that new song. Let's look at it together. It's out of Psalm chapter 40 and verse three. It says this, he has put a new song in my mouth, praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. As dark as it seems right now, all this talk about coronavirus and stuff happening uh, in the economy that, that's happening, and just the global unrest, man, this could be the greatest time ever for the church. How are we going to respond? We have a choice, and we need to choose wisely. Amen? There is much at stake and much that is set before us right now, and we need to be choosing life in the midst of a lot of death that's happening around us, spiritually speaking, and even physical. Your heart and your mouth, as you know, as a new covenant believer, are connected. And out of the abundance of your heart, you will speak, you'll sing, you will prophesy, you will pray, you will declare. Amen? And this is the way of the new covenant. So first of all, new covenant prays from the inside out, doesn't depend on your circumstances to be all lined up and wonderful. Amen. This praise is the result of God's grace in our lives 
and we are simply responding to that grace. God is the one who loved us first, and now loving him in return is simply a response to who he is and to what he's done. So faith responds to what grace has provided. We don't use our faith to convince God or to try to move God as if he's stuck. You know, a lot of people try to move God into action through their faith, and we don't have to do that. God has already supplied all of our needs through Christ Jesus. Amen. So we don't have to wait for the waters to part now. Uh, we, we get on the other side of the Red Sea, and then we praise God. No, we don't have to do that now. We can and should praise God now by faith before we even see the breakthrough, before we even see the waters part. You know, whatever breakthrough we're believing God for right now today, we can praise God now before we ever see it manifested in the natural realm. Hallelujah. We don't have to wait for the mountain to be removed. We've been given authority in Jesus' name to speak to that mountain and tell it to be removed. So praise is never dependent on circumstances, as we said last week. It's never dependent on what's happening in the natural realm. When praise comes from the heart that is trusting God, powerful kingdom things begin to happen. And not only is praise never dependent on the circumstances, but listen, praise also involves remembering. It's really important for us to understand this. I begin to think about how great God is and what he's already done for me. And it's it gets my eyes off of me and onto who he is and what he's done. As I remember, my focus is shifted to what is already greater. He's the one who's greater. He always will be. No matter what I have going on that seems great in my life, God is great. He is greatly to be praised. Amen? And he's the one who's greater in me than he that is in the world. Another one of my Psalms that I love so much is Psalm 42 and verse 6. And David said this, O oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I will remember you. This is what David's response was for him being discouraged and depressed. He was dealing with raw emotion and he said, I will remember you even when my soul is cast down within him. And then he goes on at the end of that Psalm in verse 11 to ask this question, why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, with an explanation point, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. Wow. David started to encourage himself in the Lord by remembering God and his faithfulness. And then Psalm 103 verse 2 says this, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Well, this is going to sound kind of silly, but to forget not, we have to remember. <laughs> to forget not, it requires us to take some time to remember. Did you know that by remembering what God has done for you in the past, you can actually encourage yourself in the Lord in your present situation right now? Maybe you're facing something right now that's trying to appear like a giant in your land, like a mountain in your way. Well, I want to encourage you to start remembering how God has been faithful to you in the past. Start remembering all the times that he's brought you through in the past and encourage yourself in the Lord as you begin then to put things back into perspective again. I want to do something a bit unusual today, and that is I want to play for you a pre-recorded original song that I wrote a few years ago called I Will Remember. It's off of our Inside Out project. But this is a song that speaks of exactly what I'm talking about right now. And so while this is playing, I'm going to play the song for you. And while this is playing, what I would really like to encourage you to do is just start remembering God's faithfulness to you. 
fact, maybe you could even jot down a few things as you're listening to this song. Let this be an encouragement to you right now. And I'll try not to sing along with the recording and jam out, okay? <laughs> no guarantees. Amen. 
I will remember. And see, when we begin to remember what God has done for us, we stir ourselves up. We encourage ourselves in the Lord because that's who God is. He's always been faithful and he always will be faithful. Hallelujah. So praising God is supernaturally powerful as we respond to the word of God and the spirit of God that's already within us. This is all part of worshiping in spirit and in truth. In our last couple of sessions, we talked about how as a kingdom of priests, we now offer spiritual sacrifices instead of animal sacrifices like they did in the Old Covenant. Hebrews 13, 15 says that through Christ, we can now offer up a sacrifice of praise. Well, what is that? You know, what is a sacrifice of praise? Well, you say it's a sacrifice for sure. I don't want to praise God. Well, listen, the sacrifice of praise is the fruit of your lips. And remember, your mouth is connected to your heart. So the sacrifice of praise is the fruit of your lips giving thanks giving praise to his name, the name that he's given you authority in and the name that is above every other name. Hallelujah. In the old covenant, you know this, but the worshiper had to bring an animal sacrifice and then the the priest would help them uh, offer it up as a sacrifice. And every now and then, you know what? I think it's good to remind ourselves, aren't you so thankful that today the sacrifice of praise is what we're required to lift up. The fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name, as opposed to trying to shove an animal in the back of your minivan on your way to church for the weekend. Can you imagine if we were still offering up animal sacrifice? I'm telling you, Jesus paid the price that none of us could afford. And really, he's made it so easy for us today. Hallelujah. And yet sometimes it seems like such a big deal that we actually offer up that sacrifice of praise, giving thanks to his name. Now we can rejoice again. And he says, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. So we can rejoice over and over and give thanks in everything. It's not just for coming into a temple or into a weekend service. Amen. Now it's a lifestyle. It's not something we just reserve for an event or for a conference. It's how we live our lives from day to day. We talked about how now we can do good and share and and sow bountifully and live to give. We give of our finances as new covenant believers. We give of our time and our lives and giving of our finances really just is a uh, into the kingdom is an expression of our trust in God. So our very life now is a living sacrifice. And whatever we do, we are to do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. As new covenant believers, we can pray and we can sing in tongues and magnify God and even give thanks well by doing it. Nobody in the old covenant had this privilege, but we do. We've got the spirit of God living in us. We are the very place of the presence of God. And then we talked about how there's over 300, almost 365 scriptures talking about singing in the Bible. That's, that could be a, a special meaning right there with that many days in a year, right? So there's lots of scriptures that talk to us about singing and the benefit of that. We talked about shouting and making a joyful noise, praising so that it can be heard. We talked about laughter and how laughter, when it's done in faith, can actually be a praise unto God. And, you know, all of these things that we're talking about uh, are really things that can benefit us as a result. Yes, it blesses the Lord, but it actually is designed to benefit us as well. So uh, we can become so filled with the Spirit of God, listen to this, that we actually bless others by our lyrics and we bless the Lord as well. So when we come together as believers, we should come ready to be a blessing to somebody else. This is what givers do. We are worshipers. We are givers. And this is what we do. So listen to this in Hebrews 10 uh, verses 24 and 25. It says, and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, 
Let's consider one another. Let's let's get to know one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. That has special meaning right now during this pandemic that's sweeping the world where we're hearing more and more frequently now that singing worship to God in church is the most dangerous activity right now. (laughs) Oh man, is that not obvious? I mean, you talk about the devil hating praise to God, right? I'm telling you, it doesn't matter if you're rioting in the streets and you don't have a mask on, you're not social distancing, but you go to church and you start singing praises and it's the most dangerous activity in America. If that's not obvious, I don't know what is. I'm telling you. So God says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, encouraging one another, and so much more as you see the day of his return approaching. So we should come ready to stir somebody else up. We should consider each other and encourage and stir up our brothers and our sisters in the Lord whenever we gather together. Well, to do that, We have to live in a lifestyle that is being spirit-filled. We've got to be spending time in the Word of God, in the Spirit of God, and not come so depleted and so depressed that every time we gather, it's just like we're on life support. And thank God for that gathering that now I can, you know, get a little bit of encouragement, a little bit of inspiration, and go back out to that horrible world one more time. No, God wants us to be in the world, but not of the world. And he's given us the ability to be able to operate in what's greater because that's what's in us. Amen. Greater than he that's in the world and greater than anything that's trying to come against us. So Ephesians 5, 18 through 20, I talked about this briefly at the beginning of our live today. It says, and do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be being filled with the Holy Spirit speaking to one another. See, when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, he says you can actually speak to each other in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. So our songs should be encouraging one another. This is why I'm telling you, lyrics in our songs really matter. If we're going to be speaking to one another, then we should be filled with the Spirit as we do it, not filled with ourselves or filled with whatever we think may be truth. No, let's go to the word of God. Let's find out what the truth is, which is God's word. And let's allow that to so fill us up that that's where our lyrics and our songs come from. I'm going to share one more scripture here on this. Colossians chapter three and verse 16 says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing, encouraging one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Listen, if you can't teach it in the pulpit, then please don't sing it from the platform. If those songs don't line up with the Word of God, they may have a catchy rhythm or a beautiful melody or harmony, but if it's not the Word of God, it's not based in Scripture, it's not the Word of Christ dwelling richly in you, then you know what? Don't use it. You're not going to want the fruit that comes from somebody's poetic whatever, right? We want the word of God that is alive and powerful to produce on our behalf. And when we worship in spirit and in truth, which is the only way Jesus said we are to be worshiping, then what we're going to see, the fruit of that is going to be completely different than it would be otherwise. So God is good, and he's giving us all these ways to express our our love to him, our thanksgiving, our, our praise, our devotion, right? But we definitely do bless the Lord by by what we do here. But God is never going to be outdone. And so even though we bless the Lord while we're doing it, God causes benefit to happen in us and to us as a result. For instance, did you know that a merry heart does good like a medicine. Wow. I love that proverb because it's so true. And if there was ever a time when we needed a merry heart, it's right now. Bible says that a broken spirit will dry up the bones. 
This is why some people are dealing with cancers in the bones and, you know, they're so discouraged and life is so awful and everything is just going downhill. Listen, don't be conformed to that stuff, but take time to experience transformation by getting into the word of God and the spirit of God. Now let's wrap this up today. There's a lot of scientific and medical evidence now that can show us what happens to our immune system when we are thankful and when we praise God. Even our hormones can get balanced. Your endorphins will kick in and you will physically feel better as a result. God can literally help you with your attitude and with what's going on in your physical body as a result of what he's done in the spirit and we begin to respond to that finished work of Christ in us, the hope of glory. On the other hand, fear, as an example, will weaken the immune system. This is all medically documented. It'll weaken the immune system. It'll cause cardiovascular damage, digestive issues that can even lead to premature aging and even death. So here's the alternative. Jesus said, I set before you life and death in Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. He says, choose life. Hallelujah. So God has such good things in store for us. He knows the future he has for us, and it's not for evil or for harm. It's for good. And we just need to line up to the word of God and to his report instead of all this other stuff that's out there. Let's keep our eyes on Jesus and what really matters. So if we're under a lot of stress, we need to really practice being thankful and spend some time in the Word of God and worshiping and praying in the Holy Ghost. Spend some time praising God and your cells in your body will respond and you will boost your immune system. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 3 verse 19 says, There are times of refreshing that come from the presence of the Lord. Man, I think we just need to take some time and get refreshed. Hallelujah. Take a little praise vacation, if you will, and get some refreshing going on. Man, thank God that we don't have to go to looking for the presence of God anymore because the very presence of God is now alive and well in us because our bodies have become the temples of the Holy Ghost, according to 1 Corinthians 6, 19. So in closing, Psalm 103, verse 2 says, Bless the Lord and forget not all his benefits. So remember, if we're going to not forget, we have to remember who God is and what he's done for us. And as we do, we're going to stir ourselves up and we're going to start to get encouraged and offer that praise that becomes a supernatural place of his presence that gets released in us and then it gets released from us. Because remember, out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth speaks. So thank you so much for joining me again today. I tell you, these 30 minutes go so fast. It's unbelievable to me how fast they actually go. But I want to pray for you real quick, and then I'm going to let you go. Father, I just thank you for everybody who's a part of our live today. And I just remove discouragement and any kind of depression or fear that's trying to rest in their hearts, trying to move in and take up residence. I say no to any assignment of the enemy. I declare that no weapon formed against them will prosper. I thank you, Lord God, that you've given us your report, and your report is the one that we're standing on. Your report is the one that we're believing. And so, Lord, thank you for helping us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being our helper and helping us to focus on the right stuff and helping us to praise God, to live a lifestyle of worship, and to enter into all that you have for us. Lord, we thank you for breakthrough. We thank you for supernatural life and for supernatural healing and health and wholeness. God, I just speak restoration and breakthrough today over every person who is joining us, whether it's today or even in the future. Lord God, thank you that you are the God of the impossible, and you are turning around what looks like impossible into possible, because you are just that good. Father, we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Again, thank you so much for joining me today. I look forward to being back with you on Friday of next week. 
Also, Thursday of next week, we'll have a healing school on our Colorado campus. If you're in the area, come join us. Uh, Rick McFarland is going to be our speaker, and I know you're going to be blessed with a fresh word uh, from the throne of God. So God's for you, we're for you, and we look forward to being with you again next week. God bless you. Bye-bye. Do I hit end?